mistakes, but after choosing the wrong team in a World Cup football match, I had to get nude in front of a stadium full of about 30,000 people. I ended up on the front page of the Daily Telegraph, Australia's largest newspaper. Lost my job, went to court and got a huge fine, but a bet's a bet. The bet originated in South America. I met a fellow Aussie backpacker named Grimba on a loose night out in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Grimba changed his plans to go and work at a party hostel in Peru and decided to come along with me to the 2014 Brazil World Cup. I said it was a top load. But we came for cheap. the first game took place, we decided to put a bet on. Me and Peter did this bet a while back. If Argentina had to win the World Cup, they were getting value part in beer. If Germany had to win, I have to get mine. Germany have won, so I'm going to go follow through for this bet. See this baby girl? I will keep this value button and piercing in. Put a bauble in to start with, and then a few days later they were allowed to actually put the dangly rhinestone piercing that we'd agreed on. Got him to do a little bit of strife, he was working, slinging drinks at the bar, and he picked up some girl, got her back to the bunk room, and they were getting up to whatever mischief they were getting up to in the, in the bunk bed. Before long, the girl started screaming. <coughs> Somehow they managed to get their two belly button piercings tangled with each other. <coughs> I don't think I'll ever, ever meet another bloke that will be able to tell me he's been in that position. Over the past four years, we've both been hyping each other up as to what the next bet's going to be. 2018 FIFA World Cup will be organised in Russia. We're on the phone one time, driving home from work and chatting to Rimbo and through the loudspeaker and we're joking about what it could be. I said, oh, why don't we continue on from what we did before? The piercing's obviously not going to do the same again. Apparently, they're stuck. <laughs> I have a piercing. So there's no fucking way putting any kind of brass or metal through the eye of my cock, so that's definitely off the limits. And he suggested maybe a tattoo, and I said, oh, I'm a clean skin, so I'd prefer to stay away from, from the tattoos. Somewhere amongst it all, I've come up with the idea of this streak. When we said it, we're going crazy down the phone. No fucking way. Hey, no fucking way. We both said to each other, what are the chances we're actually going to pick the team anyway? You know, a bit of luck last time, and we, we did what we did. So we agreed on the streak, and a couple of caveats. Rimba had a year to do the bet, otherwise he was going to have to go back to his tattoo parlor and, and get a Coffee, and if I didn't do the bet, I had to get a tattoo of, of Rimba's choice. The other rules were mostly around the prestige of the game. If it was in Australia, it had to be one of the big four co the NRL, the AFL, the A League, or the Rugby Union. Otherwise, it had to be some big event, like a big sporting event, such as the Ashes, or it could be the Melbourne Cup. I don't think anyone would be running naked alongside all those horses. So <laughs> that one's off the cards. Rimba was going to be overseas in the UK at the time, so he'd agreed on doing it at an EPL football match. Once we have all the rules in place, we agree on the bet over the phone. Yeah, that's right. We didn't even shake on it. Of course, there's absolutely no guidelines for handshakes. I choose Germany again. Rimba chooses France. It's going to be another goal here. 2 0. That is it. Germany are going out of this World Cup. And France just keep on winning. It's getting towards the semi final, and I feel like every match they're playing, it's a $10,000 bet on it. In a $10,000 final. $10,000. Not much of a gambler, but I can understand what these stakes are like. Griezmann with the corner, kicking him, TT! <laughs> and it is over. Allez les bleus, all the way to the World Cup final. I fucking hate it, first class. The final of the 21st Football World Cup. Flicked in by Griezmann and flicked off! Antoine Griezmann. France have their lead. You fucking French fuck. It is France. France are the champions of the world. And I've officially lost the bet. Fuck this shit! For the next 300 plus days, I get constant messages on all the social. I think I must have seen every single video of Streaker that's ever streaked of all time. Get photos, messages endlessly around the French holding up the World Cup. And I can probably sing the French national anthem the amount of times I've got sent that. I know if I don't complete the bet, Rimba will never let me live it down. You can't just ignore the bet. It's a bet. Before I know it, I wake up hungover with only two days left to complete the bet. I head down to Parramatta to cut chat with a group of mates to watch the Parramatta Eels West Tigers game and it's Benji Marshall's 300th game. So they're due to have a packed out stadium of almost 30,000 fans. I think at this point I was probably about 5 to 10% chance of actually going through with it. I got to the stadium. Drinking beers, beers, beers. Things were coming through the back of my head. Do I really want to be going to a tattoo parlor tomorrow? I think I looked at the clock and on the scoreboard it was about 5 minutes left. I thought, what if I just get this over and done with right now? And I looked down, there's a little spot between a couple of the security guards and there's an opportunity that I could just get over that barricade. I'll be off. At this point, a few of my mates were trying to stop me. Don't do it. Others are like, you can do it! I scald my beer. I walked down the staircase. <laughs> I 
we've got a streaker on the field. Yeah. Rabs, where's those binoculars? <laughs> you don't want to look. Oh, I... yes, I do. <laughs> you don't need binoculars. I can assure you. Mind you, I tell you what, you'd have to have big magnification on them. Now, the boot throwing. Is there a prize for boot throwing? Obviously, there's been a rule change. Well, see, there's another rule that you have to be properly apparelled. So if somebody... If Are you, you talking like, about the streaker? Or the <laughs> <laughs> no, well, he's, he's guilty. There's no, no question, your worship. Police come over, cops interviewing me and asking me questions around how could I possibly have done this for a stupid bet and such a stupid thing and what have I done and all the verifications and the fine and everything that's going to come and he asked for a statement from me. All I could think of was, was four simple words. A bet's a bet. That's a bet. That's a bet. Only a few people that knew about the bet messaged me that night and I didn't get too many comments about it and next day I was thinking maybe I've sort of got away with this in a way. I, I know I've still got to pay the fine and go to court and the rest of it but maybe I can keep my job etc and it got to about midday on the Monday. I thought all was good and then within minutes my phone was blasted with messages and, and missed calls over about a 10 minute period and it was uh, friends, family, use in the HR department at work and some journo from the Daily Telegraph had gone and got my photo off LinkedIn and, and put it alongside a naked photo of me and put it up on the, the internet. I knew that wasn't going to go well and next morning I had a HR appointment. I kind of felt like I had a little bit of a chance at the time. I thought, you know, it's Triple M, they're larrikins, normally they'd pick up on a news story like this and run with it. Oh, we've got a streaker! He's roaring away from the security guard from point... Oh, he pulls oh. up and he slips oh. over! You have a bit of a laugh about it, maybe I could do something to make up for what I've done or try and put a positive spin on, on the whole thing. So the next morning I've woken up and I'm ready to go into work to either get sacked or find out what's going to happen. Everything's feeling good at 6 o'clock, I get up, have a coffee, look at my phone and I've got all my tradie mates who have been up super early and they're all sending me selfies of them alongside the front page of the day's newspaper, the Daily Telegraph. It's me completely nude and then on page nine there's another full spread of me bringing my shirt in the air and completely naked and that's when I realised that I probably don't have too much of a chance of, of keeping my job. I did a stupid thing. Yeah, I guess that. <laughs> You're fired. And I'm getting a lot of calls from other news crews and media outlets. My personal favourite would have to be Kyle Sandlin's. Yesterday, if you saw the front page of the Daily Telegraph, you would have seen a nude man on there, uh, tackled to the ground by security, arrested and marched off. He was streaking. Now, this particular nude guy was a radio guy. But one or two many drinks. He must at the have football. had a few beers. He thought, I'm going to get fully nude and run out onto the oval. A brave man. I wouldn't do that. And I believe the guy has been fired. Fired for getting his dick out. I would like to offer, and I've checked this with no one except for the CEO this morning. I rang the CEO and said, This poor bloke got his willy out, cheered by 25,000 fans of the football. Cooper, you have everything it takes to represent the Kyle and Jackie O show. Put on your little suit, pants or no pants. Pants. Front up here to the radio station, we will organise something for you. You have a place here amongst us. Well, he certainly seems like a fun bloke to go yeah. out with. Oh, yeah, yeah. I avoided the media at the time, and while things settled down, I found myself a top-notch lawyer. Do you accept your consequences? I ended up with a big fine. I lost my job, but I kept my word, and I still don't have any tattoos. I bet's a bet.